Hello everyone. Uh, here I would like to share the, um, some of the results of our uh, work. Uh, um, the goal of this project is to show that the state governments uh, should collaborate with each other as the states are not necessarily disconnected from each other according to the mobility patterns. And uh, we would like to create an opportunity to optimize lockdown strategies by aligning policies with the individual's mobility pattern. Um, how it going? Okay. Uh, it's challenging to predict and control the outbreaks due to the uh, complexity of human interactions and movements and also population density, heterogeneity in population density. In the US, uh, we can say that most of the state governments act separately with most of the measurements and risk definitions being done by administrative patches or borders. Social distancing, contact tracing, and quarantine policies have been the most impactful policies uh, on controlling the diffusion of the, the coronavirus. There is a critical need to carefully define the borders of areas with different risk levels, considering the location of suspected cases. And uh, we can say that we need to know where the people who were in touch with the infected person were and went. Uh, for this purpose, we use mobility data, uh, anonymized mobility data collected with spacecraft from cell phones and created networks in which uh, locations are connected to each other based on the movement of individuals based on the location. We created weekly networks for all around the US. This figure shows the degree distributions of the location showing number of the movements to and from uh, each location and you can see that in the city areas we have much more number of uh, movements than uh, comparing to the suburban and rural areas and uh, mobility patterns that we see in that figure can be characterized in three overarching concepts short distance movements medium distance movements or long distance movements that happen for different reasons. A combination of these habits in a self-organized manner form the size and borders of the communities that we want to analyze. Uh, we use Luvian method to, uh, to find or detect the communities in the US uh, at multiple scales. Uh, these communities refer to the areas in which people mostly move within the communities rather than the other areas. Here I showed the communities in the first level uh, with the same color, but these communities are multi-scale phenomena. It's multi-scale phenomena, meaning that at a finer scale of subdivision, larger communities uh, divided into a smaller communities allow us or policymakers to go to the into the smaller scales and do the policies and apply the policies in the smaller scale. Here I showed the sub-communities inside the communities with the that they are separated from each other by black lines in this map. And uh, we also did um, analysis in the larger scale. We applied the community detection into the networks of the communities and detect clusters of communities that I showed them here with the same color tone. So you can see that we have five large clusters of communities that they have uh, more connections to each other, to each other uh, than the rest of the communities. Um, the yellow lines here represent the state boundaries. So you can see that, however, in some of the areas, uh, communities are aligned with this uh, administrative borders. In many of the areas, they strongly deviate from the state boundaries and also county boundaries that it shows here with the yellow lines. Uh, this shows that why we need to, why states need to collaborate with each other because they are not really disconnected from each other. By adding the number of COVID cases on top of the map of the communities, we can quantify the risk of the exposure uh, inside the communities. And this, uh, this helps us to align the pol uh, policies better. Here, I zoom into the communities in the previous figure. So you can see that while a large community may have many COVID cases, uh, when we uh, go into the smaller communities, we can see that some of the communities have higher number of uh, cases and some of them have lower number of cases. So those communities that have uh, less uh, 
cases, they are safer to reopen earlier. Uh, and also the other thing that we can consider is that to be careful or cautious about the commute between the low um, risk uh, communities to the high risk communities. These are the things that we can consider. And the other thing or that we, by zooming into the communities, we realize some interesting facts about these communities. One of them is isolated communities. We realize that they are some uh, isolated communities that they are geographically disconnected from the original community, that they are uh, can be universities or vacation spots like uh, these uh, university that is connected to the uh, community in New York State or vacation spots that uh, they are disconnected geographically from New York uh, uh, City commu community, but they are someone, some vacation spot for the people in those areas. And we ha also have sub communities within other sub communities. We realize that there are some, uh, some areas uh, that people prefer to move inside the community uh, rather than the nearby area. It's a good example for those ones are uh, university campuses. And also sub communities in city areas. We looks like uh, Layla's frozen a little bit. She was having connectivity problems, I think you said, Katie. Yeah, um, I froze up for a moment myself there. Um, Layla, are you there? Yes. She's yes. back now. Great. Okay, great. Yes. Do you have me? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, it's important to study to, to see that how lockdown strategies and quarantine policies are changing the borders of these communities and these patterns. Here I show for this for six weeks from February to May, and you can see that at the beginning in uh, February and March. Uh, it's a very uh, clear example. You can take a look at the Florida state. At the beginning of the pandemic, it was connected to the Northeast uh, community cluster in the US, we were showing that it was a vacation spot for the communities in that area. And then in March, it's getting connected to the uh, community cluster in the rest of the, US, uh, rest of the US. But, and just in April and May, it's getting disconnected from that far uh, distance communities. So we try to study these uh, patterns uh, by more details, but I didn't have time to explain them here. Um, thanks for listening. I would like to say that you can see much uh, more about our work in uh, ncoronavirus.org mobility map. And also, I would like to say that we have a team of volunteers and are interested in further collaboration. You can reach us in endcoronavirus.org or at uh, nexty.edu.org. Thank you.